sweep away my pain bring your healing to my heart help me love once again cares and worries get me down fear of failure fills my day when i'm lost and all alone help me lord to find your way people knocking at my door strangers seeking love and care never let me turn them down teach me gently how to share children come into my life with your laughter and your song when will i become like them teach me lord to sing alone Hello dear friends welcome once again to this new session in the last session we were reflecting on chapter 8 of Ezra and we already mentioned that Ezra came to Jerusalem in 458 with all the necessary precautions and also securing all permissions needed for the construction of the city and so on and everything was well arranged and he was able to convince the people of the same and while the people were preparing to leave to jerusalem the neighbors helped the people of israel with their silver and gold ornaments and so on they also gave them worthy or rich donations and thus we see the people who came to jerusalem with esra they also had received a lot of wealth from their neighbors in babylon and therefore we see it is again the generosity of god and it also is a sign of god's providence and generosity towards his people he is the one who arranges everything he is the one who convinces the people to give donations to the jews as they return and hence we can see all the necessary things are procured for the construction of the city and we also find esra was authorized to appoint judges and leaders or those who are in authority and hence when esra came he appointed judges and persons of authority to rule over the people to administer justice according to compassion and mercy as we see in god himself thus in chapter 8 we find how god blessed the efforts of esra 
and towards the end of the chapter we find in the journey the hand of god was with them and the hand of god means the grace of providence god's providence was with esra and his court travelers and the protection offered by god during the journey is similar to the protection offered by god during the time of the first exodus people's journey from egypt to palestine and then the journey through the desert for 40 years but always under the watchful eyes of yahweh under the divine protection and providence of yahweh thus we can see god prepares everything for the journey it is not esra actually or who uh, actually does the thing he is executing the plan set by god that is what we are to understand and when we reflect on this chapter and the return of the second group of exiles under the leadership of esra we can see that god guides his people through his leaders and esra is such an eminent leader for them but if you look at esra what do you find he is a person who studied the law first lived it and then he taught it to the people and he also asked to them to be grateful to god always gratitude is always needed from everyone because god is the one who has granted us whatever we need hence our mind and heart should be full of gratitude and the story also shows that we should have deep and great trust in god and the deep trust will enable one and strengthen one to hold on to the lord even in the moments of great crisis when we find no way out humanly speaking but when god comes the way will be open for us and that is what the result of such hope will exhibit and another important practice that we find here whenever the donations for the common good for the temple for the city were given it is said that all these gold silver and precious things were meticulously weighed and the measures were recorded and this is something very special the donations for the temple in gold and silver and in various kinds and this kind of honesty with regard to the donations we are needed and honesty and fidelity or sincerity is more important than the achievements we are able to make because for god that is more precious and since much 
importance was given to this sincerity. We can say everything that was given and also the gold and silver were precisely and accurately weighed, measured and then recorded in the records. Thus we find not even a single penny would be lost without care being given to it. And therefore we can see God arranges everything in his own way. And that is the work of God we can see. And in chapter 9 and 10, we come to a very uh, difficult moment encountered by Yesra the scribe. Here the story is about the rejection of the mixed marriages and foreign wives and so on or foreign life partners. You can say why the mixed marriage was not allowed in Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 4 we read the mixed marriage is against the law. They are a sign of infidelity and ingratitude to God who saved them out of the hand of Egyptians. And when somebody goes for marriage with a foreign, a foreigner, it will be an occasion to water down their faith because they will not be able to be really faithful to the law of God because of this. And in chapter 9, we find it was reported to Yesra that the people, at least some of them, had committed the sin of mixed marriages. When the case was reported to Yesra, he tore his clothes and pulled out his beard and so on. And what is implication? First of all, to tear the clothes is a sign of being a slave to how torn out clothes and to pluck out the beard and hair is a sign of great sorrow and when somebody is able to kneel down and pray we can say it is an incessant prayer which is pleasing to the Lord and the prayer on the knees will be rewarded. And therefore we see the repentance exhibited by Yasra on behalf of the entire people. We can say he is weeping and lamenting for the sins of his co-patriots and he is crying like anything and that's why he has humbled himself and he has emptied himself we can say and it was all for the sake of the people in order to show his solidarity with them that is he is also bearing the sins of his people or he is also having a share in the sins of his people and 
this solidarity with others, oneness which he feels with others is an implication that God's will is to be observed at its very best and nothing should prevent us from observing all this. And after this repentance exhibited by Yasra, we find he also prays for the grace of renewal, renewal of the faith of himself and of the people. And that is the prayer that we find in chapter 9 verses 6 to 15. And the result of this is found in chapter 10. And there we find how the separation of the life partners of mixed marriages was executed. And we find here the people were asked to reject their life partners from other religions. We already mentioned that it was against the law. And why it was against the law? It is revealed in Deuteronomy or saying like this, Moses advised the people in this way. When you are old, if you marry from other religions, when you become old, your wives will turn your attention away from Yahweh and will make you adorers of her God. And that was the danger of mixed marriage. This is a very clear example in our own society. Just think, if there are two people belonging to two different religions come to enter into a marriage relationship. Okay, when the faiths are different, it will create great troubles and problems for their faith life. Just take this example. If two people belonging to two faiths are contracting a marriage, according to the church regulation, we can say the life partner, that is the non-believing life partner, the life partner who does not believe in our God or the Christian God, should make an agreement in writing saying that the Christian life partner can grow the child in Christian faith. Of course, at the time of the marriage, it will be agreed on. No problems. But what will happen after some time? When a child is born, what will happen? The child may not be baptized. Even though it was agreed upon at the time of the marriage. And on the other hand, the child may be taken to the place of the God of the life partner just opposite to the agreement made at marriage. And again, sometimes it can happen, both may go to one church or temple and on the next Sunday 
or day of feast, they may go to the temple of the other party or the church of other party and so on. Thus you find the children are not going to get the necessary religious formation as was envisaged and guaranteed at the time of marriage. After the marriage, practically no care will be given to these kinds of things. And if the husband or the wife is too imposing, the other may have no voice even. Hence, we should be very careful and aware of the dangers of such mixed marriages. And that is what we understand here too. And why the mixed marriages are not to be contracted? We have already explained the reason. And we also see that the mixed marriages will water down the faith of the life partners because often it will lead to a kind of religious syncretism following both gods or the gods of both religions and naturally it will destroy the Christian faith and that is the reason why the church is often against the mixed marriage contracts and the effort to divorce the life partners and that is a terrible blow for the people who go through it and it was an added reason for the Samaritans to deepen their enmity with the Jews. And we know the Samaritans are people who had entered into mixed marriages during their time. And hence we see these kinds of efforts will really put down or water down their faith and they may go after the gods of different religions and different cultic observances. That is what we can see. And towards the end of chapter 10, we also find a list of the people who rejected the life partners in this manner. Okay. When we reflect on these things, we find the questions with regard to the divorce was not easy. It is true that the marriage reforms were made by Yasra. But we may think it is unfair, unjust. It would seem to be so. But for the people of Israel, going through such troubled times, okay, we know they were in exile. They had no more kings to guide them, to rule over them. They had no temple, no roles played by the leaders who are priests. They were living without any religious leadership. With the result that the religious practices were without spirit. And 
the religious observances were merely routine like and the people they were not often ready to accept the spirit of such a laws and for them it was a great injustice towards a life partner then how can we understand it of course we should understand it in this way for the people of israel who came back after the exile there was nothing great or important to hold on to no king no temple and no role for the priest then how to sustain a religion very very difficult everyone would go would go forward and do what he or she wants to do and hence the religiosity its depth will be questioned and the meaning of the religious observances will be at stake and in this background what can be done and what should be done to unify the people if only there is something that will unify the people as a whole then only it could be accepted but sometimes we see there was nothing like it and everybody went on his own way and hence in order to keep the people of israel as a single nation as a single people we will find they were trying their best to keep up the union and for that what they did they tried to give every effort to unify the religion and also to gather together the followers of yahweh and for this such strict laws were needed at the time and there was no other way to find out the legacy of real judaism we know there were jews before the exile and how to establish a continuity with the post exilic judaism and this question is relevant because there were about four types of people four groups of jews at the time we can narrate simply in this way we had already mentioned about it earlier in some other session just to recapitulate there were the samaritans who entered into mixed marriage with assyrians secondly there were jews in jerusalem who were not exiled to babylon because they were the least and the most poor they were allowed to remain to till the ground to draw water or to do household duties there were jews who were exiled to babylon and lived there for 50 years and now have come back with repentance for their sins a third set of the jews 
and fourthly there were Jews who did not come back to Jerusalem but chose to remain in Babylon. Now out of this and there are also another group we can say the people who went to Babylon entered into mixed marriages and remained there and therefore five groups of Jews are there. Now who is the real heir to the promises of Yahweh? Because Yahweh has promised and made his covenant with the people of Israel. But who is the heir to these promises? The covenant. All cannot be. Then who can claim to be? That's a question. And after much prayer and reflection, Yasra came to the conclusion that all or only those who kept up the purity of blood or blood lineage can be considered to be the followers of original Judaism. All who had contracted marriage with other religious people naturally are not to be included in it. They are outside and hence they made this law the law of the nation. Whoever has not contracted marriage with the foreigners are the real followers of Judaism, purity of blood lineage. Of course, it was not an easy decision, but at the same time we also are to understand that there were not many who were divorced in this way. Only a very minute percentage of the people were divorced in this way. The list is given here. And when we go through the list, we understand it is a very, very minority. And what does it imply? Either many people were not ready to divorce or there were not many who had contracted the marriage. We do not know. But whatever it be, it was not so a terrific thing when we take into consideration the number of those who had contracted divorce. And hence we can understand this is the only possible way for uh, keeping up the original Judaism or the spirit of original Judaism. To conserve their identity, it was needed and that is what we can say. And not only that, the mixed marriages will have a social impact and it is not merely an action of a particular individual. And there was also a thought, it is said, that divine, the mixed marriages may affect the divine heritage, that is the land given to the people by Joshua, the divine heritage. It may become affected and hence such mixed marriages are to be discouraged and so on. Okay, whatever it be, according to the text, mixed marriages are not to be tolerated and whether it is uh, so strictly to be interpreted or not we can say 
nothing in answer because the law is clear but from the human side okay how it is to be viewed upon and for that we have no answer which you find in the text okay therefore this is all that we can uh, understand about the reforms achieved by esra and which is narrated in the book of esra okay hereby we conclude our reflections on the book of esra and in the next session we will begin with the book of nehemiah okay thank you thank you lord for the gift and love of your sacred word open our hearts to put into practice that which you have revealed to us through your word amen Thank <music> you.